Summary of My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante In the beginning of the story, a woman named Elena Greco, who is in her 60s and lives in Turin, Italy, gets a phone call from her friend Lila's son, who is located in Naples. Rafaela Lila Cerullo, who has been Elena's friend since they were kids, has disappeared. Elena says that Rafaela, whom she has always called Lila, doesn't want to be found and tells her son to stop looking for her. She is mad at Lila for going too far, so she sits down at her computer to write their story. When Elena, then known as Lenu, thinks back on her childhood in Naples in the 1950s, she remembers living in an area where lone sharks and camerists, gangsters, ran things and both men and women were violent all the time. Elena's story starts when she and her best friend Lila are in grade school. Elena tells stories about their everyday lives while they were in elementary school. She also tells the story of how she and Lila went to the strange and feared loan shark Don Achilles' apartment one fateful afternoon to demand the return of a pair of dolls they think he stole from them. Lenyu and Lila become close friends over the years, even though they are strong rivals in school. Lila is very smart and taught herself to read and write by the time she was seven. Lenyu wants to keep up with Lila, so she vows to do everything Lila does, no matter how dangerous or expensive it is. Together, Lila and Lenyu deal with the violence of their male classmates, watch the women in their neighborhood fight over their cheating husbands and lovers, and work hard in school. However, it becomes clear that Lila and Lenyu are on very different paths, even though they both love books and want to get rich by writing a book together. When it's time for Lenyu to take the test to get into middle school, her teacher Maestro Oliviero encourages her to go to study classes. Lila's parents know they can't keep sending her to school, so they get her ready to work in their father Fernando's cobbler shop with her brother Reno. Lila tries to keep Lenyu from taking an exam by convincing her to skip school and go to the beach. When they are almost there, Lila changes her mind and drags Lenyu back home. Then, Don Akil is killed on a rainy August day just before Lenyu starts middle school. Alfredo, the father of Lila and Lenyu's friend Carmela Peluso, is arrested for the crime. He is a bitter worker who lost everything playing in bars owned by Don Akil and the powerful Silvio Solara. Carmela is very upset, but Lila tries to make her feel better by telling her that even if Alfredo did kill the man, he did the right thing by killing the ogre of fairy tales. As young women, Lila and Lenyu still try to find ways out of the bad lives they think are in store for them. Lenyu has trouble in school, which makes her parents fight about whether or not she should quit. Lila, on the other hand, starts working in her dad's shoe shop. She always tells Lenyu how great her job is and insists that it is more important than learning. Soon, though, Lila asks Lenyu if she can study with her for her end-of-year test. It's clear that Lila's library books aren't enough to keep her mind busy. But after learning for a few weeks, Lila tells Lenyu that she doesn't want to do it anymore. She and Reno are working on a very important secret project, a line of high-quality shoes for men and women that they hope will sell well in town and make Fernando more money so he can open a factory. As Lila and Lenyu learn more about how much power the Solara family has in their neighborhood and how Marcelo and Michelle Solara, two brothers older than the girls, pick on and bother the poor girls there, they realize that the only way to protect themselves is to get money of their own. Lenyu does very well in middle school and gets an A. But it bothers her that Lila doesn't seem proud of her. Her self-esteem is hurt even more when Lila beats out Lenyu for an award for the best library user and when Carmela's older brother Pasquale uses Lenyu to flirt with Lila. Lenyu can't deny that Lila has changed and become more beautiful in ways that are hard to describe. When Lenyu tells Lila that she will be studying Greek in high school this fall, Lila asks, what is high school? One day, Lila and Lenyu were walking around their neighborhood when Marcelo and Michelle Solara pulled up in their Fiat 1100 and asked the girls to go for a drive with them. Lila and Lenyu say no, but the boys keep bugging them about it. When Marcelo grabs Lenyu's arm from the car and breaks her mother's bracelet, he gets out to help her pick it up. Lila pulls a knife out of her pocket, puts it to Marcelo's throat, and threatens to kill him if he touches Lenyu again. 
As the weeks go by and summer dance parties are held at the homes of Lila and Lenyu's friends and co-workers, it becomes clear to Lenyu that many of their male friends have fallen in love with Lila. Lila dances with boy after boy, lost in the music, at Giliola Spagnolo's house. Giliola is Lenyu's student, and her father is the pastry chef at the Solara's bar. Marcelo and Michelle show up. Marcelo dances with reckless Lila, while Michelle kicks out Pasquale, Antonio Capuccio, and a few of Lila's other male friends. Lila and Lenyu follow their friends downstairs, where Pasquale is yelling at the loan sharks and camerists who run the neighborhood. After this, Lila is obsessed with learning about Italy's past. She starts going on long walks with Pasquale, where he teaches her about communism, fascism, and many other political ideas. Lenyu, on the other hand, finds out that Nino Serator, the boy she liked when she was younger, is one of her new high school students. Before, Nino's family had to leave the neighborhood because Nino's artist father, Donato, was accused of having an affair with Antonio's mentally ill mother, Melina. During the Christmas break, Reno becomes obsessed with collecting fireworks for a New Year's Eve show that will be better than the Solara's annual party. Lila and Lenyu agree to spend New Year's Eve with Stefano Caracci and his family. Stefano is the son of Don Akil and works as a grocer. Since his father died, he wants to make up with his neighbors. At the party, Reno and his friends set off a big show of fireworks. When it looks like their show will last longer than the Solaras, the Solaras start shooting across the spaces between the balconies of their buildings, which scares Lenyu, Lila, Reno, and their friends. After this, Lila and Reno's relationship gets worse when Reno tries to show their father the shoes they made. Fernando gets mad at both of them and says they shouldn't have made shoes behind his back. Lenyu goes back to school and keeps doing well, getting the praise of many of her teachers even though Nino still doesn't pay attention to her. Marcelo Solara starts to like Lila and starts going to the Cherulo house every night for dinner. Reno and Fernando are happy to see him, but Lila still hates him very much. Reno puts the shoes in the shop window in the hopes that someone will buy them. Marcelo thinks about buying them, but at the last minute he changes his mind. He does, however, ask Lila to marry him. Lenyu goes to stay with Oliviero's cousin Nella Encardo on the island of Ischia, where Nella runs a small boarding house. Maestro Oliviero told Lenyu to go there. Here, Lenyu spends a few weeks relaxing in the sun, but she is upset when Lila doesn't answer the many letters she writes to her. Her vacation also takes a strange turn when the Serator family comes to stay at Nella's. Lenyu wants Nino, but when she finds out that Nino's lecherous father, Donato, is interested in her, she runs away from the island out of fear and disgust. Back in the neighborhood, Lenyu finds out that Lila is planning to turn down Marcelo and marry Stefano instead. Stefano buys the shoes and tells Lila that he wants to marry her. Lila tells Marcelo the news herself and tells him that she will kill him if he tries to hurt Stefano or anyone else in her family out of anger. Stefano gives Fernando a lot of money and tells him to hire more people and start making Lila's plans for Cherulo shoes. Fernando agrees to do it, but he doesn't want to. Lenyu starts going out with Antonio because she wants to have an older lover like Lila. In the meantime, Marcelo starts spreading nasty stories about Lila, and Pasquale, Enzo, and Antonio attack the Solaras and destroy their car. Lenyu helps Lila get ready for her wedding and stops her future mother-in-law Maria and sister-in-law Panuccia from being mean to Lila. As Lila's wedding day gets closer, Lenyu worries more and more about losing her friend for good. Stefano buys Lila lots of gifts and finds them a nice new apartment to live in after they get married. Meanwhile, Lenyu tries to tell herself that school is her wealth, even though she gets in trouble with her religion teacher for acting up in class. Nino gives Lenyu the chance to print a polemic against religion in a local political magazine. Lenyu asks Lila for help finishing the article, but Lila says that reading Lenyu's writing and seeing how she shines hurts her. A few weeks before their wedding, Stefano and Lila have a big fight because Stefano wants to make sure that Cherulo shoes will make money in the neighborhood in the future, 
so he gives Silvio Solara an important part in their wedding ceremony as a sign of good faith. Lenyu tells Lila that she and Stefano can start to change the neighborhood for the better if they work together. This makes Lila very angry. Lila agrees to go through with the wedding as long as Marcello isn't there at any point. Stefano is on board. On the day of the wedding, Lila's friend Lenyu helps her get ready. When she thinks about how her friend will soon be a married woman, she feels fear, jealousy, and even disgust. After the ceremony, at a noisy reception at a nearby restaurant, Lenyu avoids Antonio and tries to talk to Nino. She is distraught when Nino tells her that the journal didn't have room to publish her piece. As the party goes on and people get more drunk and wild, the adults start fighting. They think they have gotten worse service and worse food and wine than Stefano's. Lila doesn't notice the chaos around her until Marcelo Solara comes in, sits down at her and Stefano's table, and crosses his legs to show that he is wearing the prototype of the Cerullo shoes for men. These are the shoes that Lila worked hard on for months, ruining her hands in the process. About the author Since Elena Ferrante is an anonymous author, not much is known about her life. Elena Ferrante is an Italian author who writes under a pen name. She has said in interviews that she was born in Naples, and her best-selling books include the Neapolitan novels, My Brilliant Friend, 2011, The Story of a New Name, 2012, Those Who Leave and Those Who Stay, 2013, and The Story of the Lost Child, 2014. The Man Booker Prize and the Independent Publisher Book Awards have both given awards to Ferrante's books, and Time magazine named Ferrante one of the 100 most important people in the world. Ferrante's decision to share her life's work under a pseudonym has left many readers wanting to know her true name. However, many others insist that a woman releasing on her own terms marks a new age in book writing and a new way for female writers to get noticed. In 2016, the Italian writer Claudio Gatti wrote an article that claimed to reveal who the mysterious author Ferrante was. The article was controversial, and many readers criticized Gatti's attempt to find out who Ferrante was. The Days of Abandonment and The Lost Daughter are two of Elena Ferrante's other books. Her work has been put on stage and filmed many times. Her 1992 book Troubling Love was turned into the 1995 movie Nasty Love, and the Neapolitan novels are currently being turned into a 32-part TV series for HBO. Even though not much is known about Ferrante's life, her books are about female friendship, love and cheating, broken communities, and how men and women's relationships are often sad and based on transactions. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.